G'day guys, I'm Spud from Survivor Southwest, and today we're going to have a bit of a chat about using tourniquets. Now we've all seen tourniquets in movies in one way or another, where it, whether it's a professional tourniquet like this, or something made out of a rag or a belt. Um, I'm going to bust a few myths on them, because using them is quite a bit different than what you've seen. But before I get into that, if you do like the content I'm putting out on my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the likes, share my videos around. The more you guys interact with my videos, the more they get seen. And uh, the more people that see my videos, the more skills that we can all learn together. Let's get into it. Alright, so before applying a tourniquet, you need to figure out whether or not you need to put a tourniquet on. And to do that, you need to understand a little bit about um, different types of bleeds. So, if you are bleeding quite a lot, but it is a dark red and it is sort of just oozing out, it's not pumping, you're dealing with a bleed from a major vein. So. Bleeds from a vein are traveling back towards the heart and after the blood goes through all the capillaries and on the way back, it's not under a lot of pressure. So these sort of bleeds can usually be patched up by packing the wound with gauze and applying a pressure bandage to it. And that way you're not cutting off circulation, you're not risking any nerve damage or anything like that. If you're dealing with a bleed that is bright red in color and it is spurting, that is when you're dealing with an arterial bleed and you know you're dealing with an arterial bleed because the blood will go everywhere. The human heart pumps enough pressure to squirt blood around nine feet. So once you're dealing with an arterial bleed, they're a lot harder to control because that blood is under a lot of pressure. That is when you start looking for ways to stem the blood flow to the affected area. And that's where a tourniquet comes in handy. So this is a cat tur uh, tourniquet or a combat applications tourniquet. And these are probably the most common ones available on the market. They are absolutely everywhere. There is different types. There's a rat tail, there's Israeli bandages, and I will do videos on them later. But today I'm just talking about this and talking about an improvised one. Now, we've all seen in movies where the hero gets a gunshot wound or a uh, major laceration, throws a tourniquet on and continues on. I'm going to tell you right now that that is not going to happen. The only thing worse than needing a tourniquet is having a tourniquet applied to you. The person you put this on is going to be in an excruciating amount of pain. They are painful and they get more painful the longer they're on. Once you put a tourniquet on, you do not take it off. The pure reason for that is after a couple of hours, there will be a buildup of toxins in that limb because of lack of blood flow. And if you remove that tourniquet, those toxins are gonna move through the body and can put the heart and other organs into shock and shut that person's body down. So these, should, once applied, should only be taken off by a medical professional a hospital or somewhere like that. When you put a tourniquet on, after about four to six hours, you are risking permanent damage to that limb. <coughs> One to two hours is usually roughly how long it'll take, depending on where you are, to get to hospital and get this off. But four to six hours, you're looking at permanent damage to the limb. Uh, that limb will, will start to die after that time. So that's another thing you have to take into account before applying a tourniquet. If you are more than four to six hours away from help, you are going to risk doing permanent damage to that leg or that arm, whatever you're putting it on, before you can get help. 
So let's get into using this. Okay, so using the tourniquet. So let's say I've just sliced myself down to the bone across my leg here. Now I have some major arteries that run through there, including the femoral artery. If you sever that, you're in a bad situation indeed. Um, what you do, basically tear that, and that will turn into a loop. Now you can either feed the leg through, but if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to move it, you can just tuck that under there. Now, you want to position the tourniquet so it's around between one or two inches or three to four fingers above the wound. But you also want to make sure that you are at least three fingers away from a joint. So you don't want it to be right up in a joint or, um, or close to any sort of joint. It's not going to make it as effective and it's just going to be more painful. So about one to two inches above, at least three fingers below a joint. Then you want to tighten it. Right, so you want to tighten it to the point where you can't fit three fingers underneath it. Okay, so I can't fit three fingers underneath it. So that is where that is at its good start point. I then bring that back around, but I don't go over this. So I just leave that there for now. What I want to do now is this little handle, I twist that. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now. And that'll lock in under there. So once I've got that twisted, I then check for pulse. So if I'm still bleeding, or if I can still feel a pulse, then this needs to go tighter. Once that is on, and I no longer feel a pulse and I'm no longer bleeding, I then strap that up so that can't come undone. I then write the time, if I can, that I applied the tourniquet onto my leg. And that is as simple as these tourniquets are. And it's only been on me for a few seconds and already it is painful. My leg is getting hot. It's very uncomfortable. But that there is how you use a simple tourniquet. I will do it up close, so show you that I can do this one-handed. That's how easy they are. So up close, I'll do my arm, just so I can show you I can do this one-handed. All right, so. There we go. Move that to the right position. So go up a little bit. Making sure I'm at least three fingers away from the joint and I'm up from there. I can't fit three fingers under here. And then I tighten. And once that's on, I can no longer feel a pulse. I've completely blocked off circulation. As you can see, there is no capillary refill happening in my hand. So I have effectively shut off the circulation. I can then wrap that around. strap that up and write the time on. So as you can see, my hand is starting to not look very good because there is no blood refilling the blood I'm moving out of my hand. And then you can watch as the blood returns back to my hand, capillary refill, 
All right, I got circulation back. So that is the cat tourniquet. As I said, it is the most common one out there and it is possibly one of the most simple tourniquets to use. You just got to know when to use it. Now you can improvise one of these and I'll show you how now. So anyone who is familiar with me and my channel, you will know what this is. This is a schmarg and they have a million and one uses. Using it as a tourniquet is one of them. So what you want to do is fold that like a triangular bandage. When you're trying to take, make a triangular bandage into a bandage. So basically fold it into a triangle, then kind of fold it up so it's into a long bandage. Then what you want to do is wrap the affected leg. And then you want to tie a reef knot in there. The reason I tie a reef knot in there is because it's going to be easy to get undone because this is going to be very tight. You then need to find yourself a stick or a branch and put it through the two layers. So I'm not putting it right underneath against the skin. I am putting it in between the two. The reason I'm doing that is because this is going to tighten up and this layer here is what's going to apply that pressure. So what I want to do then is tighten that to a point again where I no longer have circulation. Then all you need to do is find a way to either hold that stick there or you can get another bit of rope or something and tie it so it won't come undone. Some people even, if the stick's long enough, tuck it into the belt. So then that way is another quick way of being able to produce a tourniquet. And as you saw, that was quite tight and being a reef knot, that comes undone easily. Alrighty guys, well that is the cat tourniquet. As I said, very readily available, extremely easy to use. They are almost foolproof. There's just a few things you need to remember. One of them is you need to be above where the wound is, at least one to two inches. You need to be at least three fingers or one to two inches away from the closest joint. You need to tighten it up to the point where there is no longer a pulse. And then once you have put it on, you leave it on, especially after a couple of hours. The person you have put it on, they are going to be screaming for you to take it off. You are not to take it off, especially after a couple of hours because there is that toxin buildup and they will need a shot of potassium to counteract any of those toxins moving back through their system. And that needs to be done by a medical professional. So that is the cat tourniquet. Once you have it on there, you're not gonna wanna move. So the movies are wrong. Once you have it on, you're not gonna be able to keep going. So that's another thing you need to think about. Well guys, that is it for me today. If you do like the content I'm putting out on my channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, hit like, comment, share it around. The more you guys react to my videos, the more they get seen. And the more people that see them, the more people learn how to be able to survive out in the bush and how to be able to survive in an emergency situation. And that is just better for everyone. And I'll see you all next time.